Hi, I'm Chris from Simul, and today I'll be doing an overview of the lighting and atmospheric settings within True Sky Sequence Actor in Unreal Engine 4, covering what each of these settings do, as well as settings that I'd normally change for my scenes, and all of the large performance hitting settings that you might need to be wary of. Last video I covered the cloud settings within the Sequence Actor, you can find that in a link in the description, or head on over to the True Sky channel, and I will in the future be going down and completing one of these videos for each of the main headers on the sequence actor. So to find the lighting settings, they are fairly near the top, they'll be underneath the time and the clouds, and you'll find lighting. And I'll start at the top. So the first one is the light option, which has a drop down. This just allows you to choose which directional light within the scene acts as your sun. And when you initialize a scene, it will automatically set this up. But if you ever find that when you move your time of day, the sun is not moving in the sky, a thing to check is that this directional light is hooked up correctly. And to hook it up, you just click the drop down and select which light you want. We'll also need to ensure that the drive light direction is ticked, as this also just allows the True Sky actor to move the angle of the light with the timeline. Next up we have the sky multiplier setting. This affects how bright the sky that's between the clouds is. So almost the atmosphere brightness. I would advise against straying too far from the defaults as we have it set up so that, that would be what it would realistically look like. However you can use it maybe towards the end of setting up a scene to give you a little bit more control over the overall colour of the sky within the scenes. Next we have the sun multiplier. This setting controls how bright the sunlight is that affects objects within your scenes and meshes, but it will not affect the lighting on the clouds, as that is a setting that is within the cloud section of your sequence actor, which we covered in the last video. In here, the cloud lighting. And so increasing this will just increase the strength of the shadows. So if I drag a cube in here, and then increase this setting you will see that the sun comes through a lot brighter on the ground and the cube mesh and lowering it will cause it to cast almost no shadows as the sun is not multiplied. Next up is the moon multiplier. This does almost exactly the same as the sun multiplier however it will happen at night for the moon and the reflected light which is cast in your scene. The brightness setting changes the overall brightness of the scene. So if I alter that you can see that it will increase both the cloud and the sun lighting as you would expect and lowering it lowers it as you would expect. Fairly self-explanatory. And on a similar note the gamma would do the same, I would alter the amount of gamma within your scene. Another thing that I probably wouldn't touch until towards the end of my scene so that I can use it in combination with post-processing to get the look that I require. I'll also move on to talk about the star section. This will obviously be most apparent during night in the scene, so I will move the time over now. Next up I'll cover the star lights. This is a new addition that we added with the 4.28 update. Starlight will be when the sun and the moon are both below the horizon and so there will be only stars in the sky to cast a light so that our scene is not completely pitch black. It is generally powered by a directional light pointing straight down and this does not change as the stars do not move from being directly above you. The controls that we give are fairly self-explanatory, but I'll go over them anyway. The intensity controls how bright the starlight you have is. So as you can see, setting it to zero, we get almost no light over that ambient stuff. But increasing it, we can raise the brightness. The starlight cast shadow, does as you would expect. It decides whether or not we allow meshes to cast shadow using this starlight direction. The colour too, 
allows us to set a slight tint or a color to this lighting. And the minimum star pixel size, if we look up, allows us to control how large the stars are that are being cast. You may notice that not every single star in the sky is changing size, and this is due to the fact that we are also using a cosmic background texture, which I will get to later. But if you wish to disable that, you can just remove it from here. And that will show just the 9,000 brightest stars in the sky, which we use to cast this light. I'll now move on to the atmospheric section. And for that, I'll have to return my time of day to being daytime to see the best effects. And here we will find settings such as the sun radiance and the adjust sun radius settings. These two work hand in hand as altering the max radius will increase the maximum sun brightness and that can and how large it can be rendered. And so with it ticked, as you can see, the sun gets very bright and you can alter depending on how bright and how radiant the sun is. Whereas if you have it unchecked, you cannot see the sun radius changing within the sky as it is limited. However, you can still increase the radiance of the sun. Next up, we have the atmospheric amortization. This works very similarly to the cloud amortization. However, this one will control how quickly the actual atmosphere updates. The most notable times for it to be seen is during the evening scenes and I generally like to leave this setting down towards the one section as that's instant and fast updates. However, as with the other amortization, you may want to raise it up slightly if your scene is moving fairly slowly and you will get slightly better performance. And I'll move to the cosmic background texture. As I mentioned earlier, this setting controls the background texture that we use when doing a night scene. So if I were to move my time back to a night scene, you can see here that we have the Milky Way being cast across the sky. If you do not want this, you can just remove it by hitting the default button. And we do supply this texture. So if you type in Milky Way, you will find it. And it is within the True Sky plugin content folder. You can put any texture in here. If I open up the text, you can see that it is just a flat texture. And if you wish to control the brightness, there is a setting within sequences to control how bright that is. The next setting we have are the latitude, longitude and origin heading. So I'll return my time to a morning time about 9am. And the latitude, longitude and origin heading do as you would expect. And the easiest way to visualize this is within the sequence actor and scrolling out in the cloud window. And here you can see a globe and by default we are at zero zero so we will be dead in the center of the equator if we had to alter this setting you will see that we will move our latitude and if we alter again you'll see it will move in longitude around the earth or the planet that you're using and this will as you'd expect affect how the sun travels across your sky within the scenes if I get myself above the clouds here, you'll see that I have my sunset and sunrise at much different times to what it would be if I was at origin due to the fact that we were at a different position on the planet. The origin heading is a setting that sort of goes hand in hand with this, but I like to use it more for if I'm trying to get a specific scene set up. So if we have, say, the sun setting at a certain point but we want it to move around a bit so let's set it here for an example so if i want my sun to set to the left slightly on the left hand side of my scene obviously i don't really want to shuffle all the assets in my scene just to counter to equate for this so we can 
edit the origin heading and that will just turn the scene slightly like so and so now the origin heading is slightly to the left and we can again push this as far as we want so we can shuffle where the sun rises and sets in our scene very easily and the final setting that we have is the moon texture this is going to be slightly anticlimactic as this is a legacy setting as we now have a new moon system and so this section is only relevant if you're using 4.1a and just allows you to decide what texture you wish to render your moon in however in the next video or in a future video i will cover the new moon system and hopefully shed some more light on how those work and that about wraps it up um i hope that you all like and subscribe we're always excited to see what you all create and so feel free to use the hashtag true sky on any of the social medias or on artstation work head on over to the q a channel on our website simul.co if you have any more questions we're excited to see what you'll create